shape-shifting crossroads demon green tea gal and simply one hell of a Fujoshi. And welcome back to Dudes Dancing with Other Dudes the channel. Today I'm going to give a quick and dirty rundown of the BL hopefuls airing next in every season. Each handpicked morsel tailored specifically to your refined palate. Let's dig in. It's definitely the season of the sequel with fresh installments of several long-running but beloved series as is. But never fear, there's still room at the table for some brand new bangers. As the origin of an entire meme subculture, Shin Yaranaika, the little yaoi OVA that could, just reached his crowdfunding goal of 8 million yen and will drop this April. Yaranaika is an old school gay coming that's finally getting a proper anime adaptation. As for what I'm generously calling the plot, prep school student Michika is hoofing it to the bathroom one day when he spots a baddie on the bench, Abe. Well, I have to assume we'll be topping him later. They greet each other in the fashion of all gay me cutes. <laughs> then they go somewhere more private to, um, wrestle. The MC has a weakness for nice guys like Abe, the way I have a weakness for anything trying and failing to hide an obvious bromance. Now the trailers made me wonder just how graphic this was going to get. Apparently they decided to go the all ages route for the anime. If not for the burly man with the bulging package on the key art poster, you could almost be fooled into thinking this wasn't just spunt with extra steps. So fingers crossed that even a fraction of the original spiciness will remain intact. At first, Kaiju number 8 seemed like the story of an idealistic guy who wants to join a giant monster battling force. Insert childhood friend turned wife who he'll go through this romantic nightmare with. Which frankly was enough to get me excited. But what triggered my Fujo senses was the cute blonde Bessie that sleeps near him in the trailer. At night when they have a quiet moment together, RMC shares his kaiju slaying dreams with him. Then a weird creature jams itself down his throat and turns him into a human-sized kaiju hybrid. Which as far as transformation triggers go, could only have been more suggestive and on the nose if it flew up his ass. Now I plan to talk about this in a future video, but dudes turning into demons or demonic possession in general is often a metaphor for sexual awakening and urges that they suddenly can't control anymore. The implied urges dip towards homoerotic when the transformation just so happens to be triggered near the MC's hot male friend. I mean, his name is Kafka for a reason. There ain't no way this anime isn't referencing one of the real Kafka's most famous novels, Metamorphosis, where Gregor also transforms into something monstrous and struggles to figure out who and what he is now. Let's hope Kaiju No. 8 doesn't have as depressing an end as that book. Hard to say without reading ahead in the manga exactly how close Kafka and his bestie will be allowed to get in the anime. But since I'm always on the hunt for military-flavored BL these days, I'll 100% be checking this one out. I think delinquent anime must be one of the fastest growing genres lately, because we get a new punchy boy show every season now. Windbreaker, the latest boon from Cloverworks, stars boy with a girly name Haruka Sakura, an MC who wants to street fight his way into being the hero this city needs. He's also the kind of guy with a screw loose who's only impressed or even interested in raw strength. So it's no surprise at all that the cast is packed to the brim with charismatic guys who throw hands first and ask questions later. No doubt this is just a brawler buffet of lunatics for Haruka to beat up on and then eventually befriend. There's already too many dudes for me to know exactly who to ship him with from just the trailers, but it's probably his rival Hajime, since he already follows the bestie is bait rule, where the male best friend is biggest and most prominent instead of say the waifu on key art posters. Posters I couldn't help but notice feature exactly zero women. I even looked for any major female characters and thought I'd found one, and even she turned out to be a gender-fluid they-them brawler Tatsuka, one of the four heavenly kings. So while this certainly doesn't guarantee BL, the homoerotic setting cannot be ignored. You gotta love how any chart tells you f all about this anime if you haven't seen it before. Good thing I know all about it, because Black Butler is the type of show that can just walk in and out of my life, leaving me enthralled or horrified each time. But I always let it back in because it lives rent-free in my head. Now, I've never really gathered my thoughts enough to sit down and talk about Black Butler thoroughly on this channel before, assuming everything that needed to be said about this lurid creepypasta shoujo anime had already been said. And then I remembered who I was as a person, and my imaginary fears were put to rest. Luckily, a fresh new season is dropping this April that'll likely set Tumblr ablaze with a fire you can see from space. Season 4 will finally see CL in an age-appropriate setting for once boarding school. Frankly amazed it took this long to get him here, let alone have him turn up with more fancy boys his age. Granted a lot of BL has taken place in boys only boarding schools, but even I know it'd be silly to expect some Song of the Wind and Trees or Sukishio level plot. 
but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't looking forward to the kind of shenanigans that can only happen in a boys only setting. Especially as CL tries to hide the armed maids, hot demon, and naked dog man he has on speed dial. Every season, OVA, movie, or special has felt like its own unique little snowflake as far as tone and levels of BL f***ery. It's unlikely anything will ever be as gay as season 2. But let's hope season 4 will continue to honor Black Butler's peculiar, posh, and problematic roots. Mishino Jakarta Family's MC instantly gave me Hitman Reborn vibes, as he's also a timid red-handed a chump to chant power fantasy anime. Shy Guy Asano Taya only ever talks to his more outgoing, secretly a spy childhood bestie meets me, but one day he feels compelled to come out of his shell to protect her from her nightmare yandere older brother. MC will definitely be squaring up against him, but the trailer shows a cavalcade of older Chad dudes that he'll have to contend with under the guise of keeping her safe. Making it seem less like a romantic comedy, and more like Mitsumi will be exclusively in the background as thing that needs to be protected but never looted, despite them being engaged at some point. Meanwhile, I think the majority of MC's focus seems to be on the crazy dudes in his orbit. Tadamo Kairi is yet another verified BL anime we're being blessed with this April. It's in the same vein as Papa Date Shitai, in that pastel-colored, LGBT-friendly, slice-of-life anime featuring two guys raising a kid, but with the added bonus of being on a growing list of anime actually set in the Omegaverse. And again, breaking BL's most time-modern tropes, Sori seems to pick up after they've done all the relationship-heavy lifting, and most of the how we met, how we finally hooked up drama is behind them. Now I say most for a reason. As the family members they had to leave behind to achieve this hard-won domesticity, decide to start poking their asses into their happily ever after one day. Let's hope there isn't so much drama that they forget the BL in this BL adaptation. Vampires? Boys only dorm? Rivalry? I'd be lying if I didn't say a vampire dormitory was all the way up my alley. It's trying so hard not to look like Vampire Knight with extra steps, or Diabolic Lovers with less misogyny. It's even got a silver-haired MC we're not quite sure we can trust yet, and a dark-haired romantic rival to complicate things. So our female MC's luck runs out one day, and she's saved by a vampire bay. And with nowhere else to go, she hides in plain sight in her rescuer's all-male dorm. It's giving that early 2000s reverse harem flavor like Mama used to make. And in a boys-only dorm, I have to wonder who else our vampire Lee's been snacking on before she got there. I'm sure you can guess my theory. <laughs> there aren't nearly enough dude-only sports anime airing lately. Luckily, Bull Kyaku Battery stepped up to the plate. MC Haruka and his bestie K are an unstoppable and inseparable pitcher-catcher duo. Until K gets knocked upside the head one day and suffers amnesia, the injury dragging his skills back to amateur level as a result. But despite being scouted, Haruka decides to stick together and continuing to be his friend even when he doesn't remember him. Pitcher and catcher duos are often compared to a married couple, so I have to assume Haruka will be helping K piece his skills and memories back together one day at a time like a good husbando should. While this is definitely a comedy, with a cast packed with baseball-loving pretty boys, there's no way this show won't try to drive a fuel strain through your heart. Well, I'm sold. Token Rondo is back! Now for the life of me, I can never recall the finer plot details of this franchise, but it's a dude's only action slice of life about famous swords that somehow have human forms with personalities when not in use. And to give it that BL spice, they even form attachments to their former masters. I'm honestly making it more complicated than it really is. Pretty boys with swords, me watch. Ars Lovend is a pretty mid-protagonist from an equally mid-town, and in the world of Tente, Kizuku, Kante, Skirade, and Nariagaru, he is gifted with the appraisal ability that allows him to see other skills and stats. So he uses this power to find diamonds in the rough to add strength and distinction to his domain. But his real ability is Riz, because being able to find powerhouses doesn't mean much if you can't convince them to come home with you. And I couldn't help but notice his first acquisition was a tall, dark, and handsome guy to be his partner and bodyguard. Understandable. Lend me your strength, Noe! I'd rather not. Yatagarasu is a new supernatural show about Yukia, the hapless second son of a Karasu family of Japanese folklore-inspired crow people. Our underachieving protagonist gets upstaged at every turn, until one day he's randomly chosen to attend the Imperial Prince in court. I'm sure you've already guessed the prince is a total smoke show, and in that old school heaven officials blessing, long haired dreamboat sort of way. The camera eye humps him so much, animating his basic movements is gonna eat the show's entire Sakuga budget. Been a minute since we've gotten a good student crushing on his mastership. If this wasn't meant to skew BL, Yuki would be attending some princess or busty cultivator, 
and not the Royal Court DLC of Dream Daddy. Hopefully the Prince will be able to whip Yukia into shape, because together they may very well have what it takes to save their world. The Perfect Prince Loves Me, the side character, is a full-on yaoi hentai from Fujo-friendly darling Anime Festa. Since yaoi graphic enough to need censoring is still like seeing a unicorn, that alone is enough to make my list. But since we have standards and practices here in the spunk-covered city of Fujo'sville, I'm obligated to inform you of the plot, such as it is. Perfect Prince Loves Me is actually an isekai, where our insecure MC O'Neil is reincarnated into the world of a popular fantasy novel. Since he knows how the book is supposed to play out, he actually tries to avoid Prince Alec and not risk throwing off the intended hetero romance with Lily. But nothing goes how it should, and Prince Alec becomes completely infatuated with him despite his best efforts. The official website actually lets you read the first six chapters of the manga for free. And if you're watching this video after March 15th, I have fantastic news. Because they're not waiting until April, they're dropping the episode one early. It's streaming online right now, links below. Bon appétit! Sentai Daishikaku looks like pure unhinged fun, as a stressed out monster-human hybrid tries to take down the overhyped Divine Dragon Rangers from the inside. I'm keeping an eye on it because A, it's from the LGBT-friendly Tiger and Bunny universe, and B, our MC seems to have beef with the chaotic red and overly friendly white rangers in particular. Be all in the tones or not, this looks pretty hype. Kisan Basan Wakagayaru made my list, with the constant Apple references, and the sheer number of guys that start simping for grandpa after the look at me, I'm young and hot again premise kicks in. Blue Lock is back with a new movie, Episode Nagi, centered around one of my favorite sports anime ships, Nagi and Rail. There's definitely going to be appearances from the other fan favorites as well. There's no Shonen Eye and Team after all. Either way, I'm glad Studio 8-Bit is giving the people what they want. And it's Wabbit season over in Skiuta, as the franchise celebrates its 10th anniversary with new movie Rabbit's Kingdom. Dropping this June with some surprisingly complicated hot rabbit dude lore. I doubt this will have much of a plot, but apparently the black and white rabbits will mingle for the first time in this movie. They managed to sneak Empreg into this, I'll eat my hat. And that is it from me. Which of these are you most looking forward to? Are there any BL friendly anime I've missed? Tell me and others about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and feel free to check out my BL Clips channel, my anime reaction channel, or my art process channel linked here and below. Bye for now!